Richie from Fret Junkies and we are back. Uh, this is going to be a real informative video um, this time. So if there's anybody out there who's looking just for straight guitar or something like that, this probably ain't for you. This is going to be as much information as I have learned over recording guitar compressed into as much, as quick a time as possible. Um, so recording guitar, for a long time it was just mic on the cab um, into an audio interface and it was pretty barbaric. Um, I mean I had this lovely amp, lovely guitar, a pretty cruddy mic and a very, very basic, when I said basic, I think it was 18 pound off Amazon interface. And um, yeah, I could never record the guitar at all I wanted. Um, so with that being said, you just to you know, elaborate on that a bit more, you've got a mic on the cab. Yeah, that's like the traditional way. Uh, and something that's new to me, uh, a friend of mine, Nick Lyles, One Good Eye over on Instagram, I'll drop his stuff below. Um, hit me to another way of recording and actually helped me out quite a lot with this so I owe him quite a bit um, and that's impulse um, recordings you, I might be saying things wrong here I'm new to it okay um, so what it is basically is taking a signal from your amp into the computer and then it, within whatever software you use I use GarageBand on very basic add in a cabinet simulator in there um, okay, so that's the two ways I'm going to look at. You can obviously plug straight into GarageBand or whatever it might be uh, via an interface and straight in as well, but I'm not really a fan of that. To me, it sounds really artificial and I can, I can definitely hear when it's not. It just sounds very digital to me, but that's cool, man. It works for some genres. It worked great for metal and stuff like that, but when you're trying to ca catch an authentic sound, it doesn't really work. Um, so yeah, the, the two ways are the mic on the cab, and the impulse recording. Okay, so I've talked about hot plates loads in the past. Um, I can't personally use my amp without a hot plate now because to me, it's it's like a, it's like a pedal. Uh, you can get those tubes cooked and you get great overdriven tones. There was a hidden feature in here that I hadn't even realized for such a long time. And um, I'm, I'm stoked to be able to find it after a little bit of a trawl. And that is the, um, the load, the line out option. So on the hot plate, You've got an option on the front here. You've obviously got where you roll off your decibels and then you've got an option that says load. Well, you turn this to load and on the back of the hot plate, you'll take a feed from your amplifier into the hot plate, disengage the speaker from the amplifier and usually where the speaker would be plugged into the uh, hot plate, you, there's a line out option and you take that line out signal into your interface um, and then from your interface into your computer. It's worth noting as well, I've upped my interface and it's, it's loads, loads better. I'm, I, I bought a new interface about four months ago, an Apogee Due, and it's, it's killer, man. Really simple to use and the preamp and all. And every, it just feels really cool. It feels really nice to use. So yeah, I can now essentially bypass the speaker on this. And why this has been a game changer for me is uh, for example, you've been at work all day, you've come home, you want to plug your guitar in and turn into Jimi Hendrix, right? You just want to get lost in your guitar music. In come the kids, in come the family, and it's like shut down. You know, the missus is giving you daggers. You, I'm pretty sure we've all been there, right? You just want to just play and you're just getting those looks from the kids and, and your wife. Well, silent guitar playing, you know? Uh, it's amazing. So I can just take the signal into the Apogee Due and then straight into GarageBand, uh, which we're gonna go, we're gonna look into this in a minute. I'm gonna show you how I do it. We're gonna go a bit further. I'm just giving you the basics quite quickly. And then I can run my headphones out of the Due and I've got my guitar tone with any cabinet I might choose in my ears. So that to me is the, the, the best modern way to try and capture your amp. That being said, if I'm completely honest, there is nothing that beats a mic on a cab or a room mic. Um, there's something special about that way of recording. And for that, all I'm doing at the minute is I'm using uh, this Neumann TLM, uh, which is my favorite. I, I really like this microphone. 
Uh, I've got it off axis on the bottom left of the cone here. Um, and it's just turned just slightly off axis. And I've got it in a spot there that really works well for me. I've tried loads of other variants. So I've had a SM57. I've tried loads of ways, but this is just really good. And it's very simple for me to use. I have it clipped onto the side of my amp here. Protective for any guys out there worried about the vibe reverb. And yeah, I just take the signal straight into the Apogee Due and, uh, and record that way. And a lot of my recordings recently have been done with that. Um, and that is my favorite way of recording. But again, to get that good tone that we know and love, you're gonna need the volume, albeit with a hot plate, you're still gonna need the volume. So yeah, we're, we're gonna dive in now. We're gonna get in a bit quicker, uh, a bit closer, sorry, and I'm gonna show you, you know, the process I would go through. And then I'm also gonna drop in some guitar bits and uh, record it in both ways for you to take a look at. And, uh, and you guys can make your mind up. Um, if you guys are doing any other way of recording that I'm not doing here that you think could be different, you know, make sure to drop it below because I'm interested to learn as always. And um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go through the procedure. Okay, so we're gonna look at how to record silently first with the line out option or line in um, from the hot plate. Uh, make sure that your speaker is um, disconnected and the line out option is connected because you should never turn your amp on without something um, to take the load. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a cable from the amplifier straight up into the hot plate same as you would usually if you're gonna use a hot plate. Then I disengage the speaker wire from the amp and opt for the line out option from the hot plate. I'll then take that wire um, to the connectors from the Apogee Due. The Apogee Due comes with two connectors that will allow you to put an XLR um, cable in, a guitar cable, or an instrument cable. Um, then I'll open up the settings for the Apogee Due on the desktop and make sure that I have the right thing selected, i.e. guitar or mic. Um, and within the Adjue, you can alter all your parameters just on one knob. It's a real good bit of kit. It's quite expensive, but if you're after ease and something that just works simply and beautifully, that's the best thing I've come across. Then I'll open up Garbage Band uh, and I'll go New Project. It's going to give you a couple of options. Uh, you record using a microphone or line input. So I'll do that and I'll make sure I've got, I've actually got it plugged into input two at the minute and I'll make sure that that's selected there. Uh, you can opt to hear your instrument, so if you've got studio monitors set up like this, you can hear it coming through that, or you can plug headphones in to the front of the Jue and sit at your desk and play your guitar to your heart's content silently. Um, so you, or you can do both. So then I'll just go create, and we are armed, okay? Um, so let's go in and see how that looks. Okay, so now we've got the signal into the computer. Um, what you need to do then is add the cabinet. Um, so if you come down here, you go to plugins. You need to download a few things first. Um, and if I click this one here, come down uh, into audio units and the software you wanna um, download is free is Learn Wall Audio. audio. Um, and then basically what that is, is that's a loader and that's going to allow you to load your cabinets in. Um, that'll load up and then you'll go here basically and choose what cabinet you want to use. Um, and probably for this one, I'm going to use cabinet free, I reckon, um, which is, it's a Sir G12M Greenback Celestian uh, SM57 Fat. So you just select it, open, and that'll load that into the left side, and then you can either load the same cab into that side, or you can play around with your cabs. Um, so you know you can experiment. That that that's the beauty of this. You can try like a 112, a 4x12, a 4x10, um, and there's a website out there that does all these kind of blackface cabs as well. And I think in the future, I'm going to probably make my own cab uh, impulse response from my vibe reverb. Maybe that'll be another video in the future. But yeah, I'll load them in now and we'll see how it sounds. Let's go. <laughs>
right and now we're going to look at the how we use a microphone to record um, so first off you want to play with your mic setting and make sure you get it up how you, how you like you know how you want it set play around a little bit I like it on the edge of the cone just off axis with the um, towards the bottom of the cone as well that's just the response I like um, so yeah I get my microphone in a place that I'm happy with um, I take my XLR cable again into the this comes with two connectors and this one's here to connect the one um, same approach but this time I'll make sure I've got microphone selected empty project choose and then we want to have input one selected this is the important bit this is just basically telling garage band where your input is coming from nothing too uh, exciting but this has to be right um, and then create so now the microphone is picking up me um, I'll set my levels again up here on the parameters and um, let's see how that sounds Okay guys, so uh, I think I hope you find that informative. Um, I know these kind of videos are long-winded and I always kind of, I find it hard to do them um, because I, I guess people might skip by them and not get the whole amount of the information I'm trying to share. Um, but uh, my summary of it is mic on the amp is always going to win or mic in the room. Um, I think it has something to do with as well the play into the sound in the room as opposed to cans on. Um, and that being said, you know, they both have their places. So recently I've been doing a lot of late night recording and um, I've been able to do it silently, man. And that's a real big game changer in terms of, you know, I can play the guitar late at night and nobody's really going to give me too much grief. Um, and I can get some pretty good tones. The one thing I've noticed with those impulse recordings is I cannot get the line balanced. I mean, I've got the line out on your doll at the back to zero and it's still overloading. So if anybody knows how to deal with that, let me know. Also, when you load the signal up with a fuzz, the impulse response to me, to my ears, don't handle it too well. But again, I could be doing something completely wrong here. So if there's any guys out there who know what they're doing, you know, please let me know. Um, the next video we're going to be looking at some Doyle Bramel licks. That one's in started already, and I'm going to finish it off soon. Uh, we're going to be glossing over a few of my favorite pedals to do that, and now how to approach it to get at the sound. But for now, uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Richie from Fred Junkies. See you soon. Cheers.